But this is what we know about the ship. It is pronounced Dolly. It is spelled D-A-L-I. A ship that was uh, sailing under the Singaporean flag. We know that uh, reportedly it was beginning a 27-day journey to Sri Lanka, and it was supposed to be arriving in Sri Lanka April 22nd. Here is what we know from marinetraffic.com. We want to uh, uh, confirm that from marinetraffic.com, and this is uh, this information should be credited to it. So let me walk you through what we know. This ship began to move out from shore at about 12.25 a.m., taking a look at this map right now. This all happened very quickly. The ship eventually reached a top speed of about 10 miles per hour. It had been maintaining, according to marinetraffic.com, a relatively straight course of 140 degrees. I'm not a shipping expert, uh, but I am uh, going from this uh, data that we have just received. Now, according to this data, it appears that this ship began to veer at about 124 in the morning. So this is about to veer a degree, 141 degrees. And at 126, it was then proceeding at 145 degrees. And we all know, having lived and watched this iconic bridge for so long, that the degrees clearly made a difference here. And then at 152 degrees, it veered off course at 127 a.m then to 158 degrees at 128, right before this devastating and catastrophic collision. So the data shows that this collision occurred, as we've been reporting all morning, at about 1.29 a.m. That is when life changed in this area, 1.29 a.m., when the Dolly crashed into the Key Bridge, taking it down in seconds. We are continuing to monitor this and get some more information the Dolly is owned by Grace Ocean Investment, reportedly, and we will continue to find some information about that. But taking a look at this map here, which gives you a sense of how the degrees, the degrees of that turn made such a catastrophic difference this morning as the key bridge went down before our very eyes. I think all of us are experiencing the same thing, which is that we are just gobsmacked flummoxed by what has happened here, something that we have seen, something that we have all traversed many times. We have witnessed, I think we appreciate really, just the transportation that we live with us, right? Mm -hmm. Not only under the bridge, on the bridge, and just the fact that this thing has come down and will change all of our lives. And, and you know, we continue to monitor the search and rescue of that area as daylight has brought um, so many eyes on the water and we will continue to monitor that. I know that we are waiting for a news conference, but I just wanted to give you a sense mm -hmm. of what we know at this point of how those degrees made a difference, guys. Deborah, that is very fascinating that that, that the seeing degrees, the path yeah. and the, the slight change in degree um, is very telling, I'm sure, yeah. for investigators. And yes. I always think of, for both of you, I don't know if Deb's still there, I always think of when a ship goes under a bridge, I think of the height. Right. Yes. And that's what always gets me, oh, this is going to be a close one. Right. Uh, I would never think yeah. about the pylon the pylons. Right. being something in the way. It's just yeah. not something I would yeah. have even thought of. And the pilots that, um, you know, operate those ships out of, in and out of the harbor, are, yeah. these are experts. They know that, they know this, like the back of their hand. Yeah. It's so just, that's another question. Right. You know? It's not like a, it's a captain from another area. No, this is a, a pilot that deals with Baltimore's harbors. Yeah, and, right. and Deb, and just the, the frequency, you know, we we're talking to that guy from the ship. I mean, yeah. this happens all day long, ships all going day through. Long. All day long, and, and we've lived here for so long that we take, we take it for granted, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We take it for granted of, of really how delicate of an operation this is every single day. Um, I, I think it was uh, Jen Franciotti who was reporting on the backup right, the backup of cargo mm -hmm. ships, yeah. because this is just, this is our economy. This is, this is how we have lived for so long. And, and to know that it is those degrees um, that make such a difference. Um, again, this was a, a ship that was just beginning its journey back to Sri Lanka, yeah. not even uh, a half hour into its journey. So, you know, all of us, I believe, are just waking up and saying, how? 
right? right? How did this happen? And of course, we're waiting for that news conference to begin to get some sense of how. And there's so <laughs> many eyes on this trying to figure out just what happened this morning. Yeah, and, and you're also you're talking about the degrees, but you're also talking about the timing. Yeah. I mean, these are I mean, think the first time stamp you gave us was 124, but by 127, we're already off course and headed right for this thing. I mean, this is this took no time, no time. Uh, for such a gigantic vessel to make such a, a veering off course. Looking at the, the map you're showing us earlier. Yeah, no time. You know, I don't know if you guys had the same experience that I did, but I think we've all, someone woke us up this morning, right? Someone right. woke us up and said, you are never going to believe what happened, right? Uh, I know my husband woke me up and yeah. said, Deb, the key bridge has collapsed. And I, and I was so confused. I said, the Bay Bridge, right? I mean, I yeah. think we're all just, especially, so many of us who've lived here for so long, right? Yeah. And, and who know how iconic this bridge is. And, I, and it was Lacey who was saying, you know, it took five years to build this thing. And, and by all accounts, really seconds for it to come down.